Well, it was a bad weekend for government parties, but for some young budding politicians, it was a chance to get a foot on the political ladder. And this morning, we're joined by some of the success stories of the weekend. We're joined this morning by Fianna Gael's Owen Murphy, who topped the polls and was elected councillor in Pembroke Rath Mines. Labour's Dermot Looney, who became the first person nominated in South Dublin County, and Fianna Gael's Emma Kiernan, who's been elected to Newbridge Town Council. Good morning to one and all. I'm going to cut straight to Emma, actually, because people at home go, "Isn't that your one who did the picture in the papers?" It is you. I'm not going to focus on the Facebook thing, but we get it out of the way. Yeah. You took a picture that loads of girls would take every single weekend out with their friends. Absolutely. And one of your friends put it up on the website, but actually, Emma. It's done you no harm. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, I think it's hilarious. I think all the um, press and everything that's generated, like it, it hasn't, you know, hindered it at all. If anything, it's kind of raised the profile a bit, which was fantastic. You know, that people are actually asking me more about what kind of policies do you have um, after you've already had that initial, you know, kind of um, introduction, that they start up a conversation with you and then want to know a little bit more. It's humanised so. it it you, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it completely did. And it the man himself did. gave you a call on the day, and yeah, he what did, did well, he say? Yeah, nice photo. Him. I met him face to face. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, yeah. No, it was. He was really, really supportive, as was John Paul Phelan on the same day. So it was great. It was so really this, is now. this going to start a new way of campaigning now? Are there going to be more Facebook I know, photos? Now. I think the head of Fine Gael now in Newbridge might have a few things to say about that. Did you but get a bit of a talking to? No, not really, but they just said, look, is there any other ones that we should know about at this stage? I said, yeah, there's a lot more you should probably know. But is there, almost, is there anybody of your generation who has a Facebook um, um, site or Bebo site that doesn't have something on it that you're thinking, ooh, how's that going to look with the wrong political spin? Well, I, I, you know, I think that uh, it's about time people got a little bit real. I think, yeah. you know, what Emma went through was, was a bit ridiculous. Um, I'm on very active on Facebook, uh, owners as well, I know. Uh, we would have pictures there up there. You your from a long time. <laughs> there could be all sorts on there, you know. There could be all sorts on Bebo and everything oh, else. That's and a it's a to fortune. There could it, be all sorts. It's, it's, it's about time. It's about time. I you know, know. Mm. Like young people, mm. every weekend, you know, if, if we're lucky enough to be out enjoying ourselves, there will be pictures up there. But it is actually it's a great way to campaign and to spread the word. Absolutely. I was, yeah. I was very active and I, I was delighted with our online campaign. I started over a year uh, before the election. We would have had Facebook and Twitter. We would have had YouTube. We would have had Bebo. Um, and it was really trying to engage young people in politics and that was the, the ultimate success of my own campaign in Tala uh, was the engagement of maybe four or five hundred people online. Well, uh, as aspiring politicians, all of you, I mean, you all would have watched the American part, the uh, race uh, and I mean, that effectively was the first great internet uh, uh, mm. election on. I mean, did you take lessons from that and apply it to your campaign? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think at the moment in Irish politics, you're not going to go out and maybe get as many votes on the internet as maybe they did in America with the Obama campaign. Mm. But what you can use it for, and what Obama used very effectively, and I'm sure these guys did too, is for organising your own volunteers. Mm. Now, my team of, say, 40 or 50 people would all be my age. They'd all be on Facebook. So if we wanted to do something, Facebook was the way to let them know what we were doing and where they had to be. And that was very effective, you know. Okay, before you, you got into this, or, well, I mean, okay, you're concerts now, so you'll have a salary. Um, mm. um, but what, were you, what, what had your career plans been, Emma? Um, to be honest with you, I actually did science and physics and, and geology in college, oh. and I decided physics. I oh, it was very, very solitary brainy. what the kind of things I went down afterwards. So I moved into the area of recruitment and headhunting because it's very client facing, and I was planning on you know just focusing on that solely. And then I was active in Fine Gael anyway, so the opportunity came up then to run for election. We we're trying to balance it out as well, get a bit of the female vote in as well, you know. So um, the opportunity you come from a came up. Family, by the way. Um, I come from a divided political family, so there's half and half. They've got different uh, views on it. So, and Dermot, how did you make the decision to uh, to go into politics? Because it is a bit, it is a big decision to make, and it's a big commitment to make. It is a huge commitment. Yeah. I, I'm, I've been actively engaged in politics since my teens. I did a politics degree with, with social uh, policy in college, but I'm actually a teacher. I'm actually a primary school teacher. My first year of teaching in Greenhills. I work in I work in Tallinn from right, Green Hills, only down the road here from the studios. I have some friends in the teaching profession, Dermot, and they said you cannot be a teacher, you cannot be in the Irish educational system now and not be politicised. Yes, absolutely, and, and it's all the talk in the staff room uh, about what has happened. And you know, I'm very worried uh, for the children in my own class, for mm. my school in general, and for my own job. For example, I, I've only just started out. Uh, I won't be uh, a full-time politician uh, as such. I'll be doing politics full-time, but looking uh, to get paid. Uh, Otherwise, by, by, by being a teacher, and I'm very passionate about teaching as, as, as well as politics. Well, but it is a political political front line. Education is probably one of the better ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Owen, you, your, your professional career today is quite extraordinary, because correct me if I'm wrong, were you a nuclear arms monitor? Uh, yeah, nuclear weapon disarmament. I worked for an organization that monitored nuclear weapon testing around the world. I did that in Vienna. 
uh, up until this about... This the ages of the UN, was it? That's right, yeah, working in the UN system. But I worked... how, did you, how did you end up with a job like that? And why, having had a job like that, do you want to come back to Northern <laughs> Well, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to end up in that job, but I, I went over to study uh, for a master's degree in, in the UK, and uh, I studied international politics, and uh, I suppose international arms control was, was a component of that I found very interesting. And I ended up in the UN system, and it took me from London to Geneva, back to Dublin for a while, and then over to Vienna. And I worked on every type of weapon, from biological, chemical, uh, landmines, and then eventually nuclear. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating part of international relations, yeah. of politics, mm -hmm. of, of how the world works. It's something that's very interesting to me and a lot of people. Um, and I suppose when you're talking about career paths, I mean, I hadn't intended going into that, but when I got into it, I certainly had my sights on, on staying in it, maybe going to New York to the, to the, the UN there. But, I mean... There comes a time when you decide you want to put down roots, move home, and get involved at home. So that's why I decided. Well, given that, so. we, that, that we'll all face, um, um, yeah, I mean, we're the most uh, fossil fuel uh, mm -hmm. energy dependent uh, economy in, in Europe, so we're going to have to find some alternatives. And nuclear, obviously, is one of the ones that's going to be on the table. Now, in a couple of years' time, you may be in the doil. How, where would you stand on that? Well, I mean, I think it's important to find a mix of solutions. And right now, certainly, Fine Gael is talking about wind and wave and, mm -hmm. and natural resources. Um, when it comes to nuclear energy, I'm, I'm, it's something that I wouldn't have dealt with myself. Um, I definitely think there's, a, there's room for us to use it. I don't think we need to build a plant on our territory, though, on our, on our, on our soil, because there are enough plants being built across the world. So buy it from France or England. Exactly. Or you know. Um, can I ask Dermot, you? Sorry, just okay. a matter of interest. Yeah. Dermot, now, uh, given that in the next couple of years, Fine Gael and Labour could be in coalition, <laughs> what, what's the Labour position on that? Well, the, the, Labour's position, the Labour Party's position is that we uh, don't support nuclear power, uh, and we, we, we're against nuclear uh, power plants being built in Ireland, and we absolutely need to look to the There's vast the first crack in the future uh, coalition. Uh, well, well I, I have a personal stance on this, which is, which is outlined over many years, yeah. that I personally want to see the Labour Party lead a government. Um, and I think, particularly in Dublin, but also uh, around uh, Leinster and, uh, and other parts of the country, we're now looking like certainly uh, a second force in politics as opposed to a third force we're starting to build beyond it. So the reason I joined the Labour Party six years ago was to see it lead a government to, to realign Irish politics on a left-right basis. And I think uh, over the last couple of days, we've really seen the first steps towards that. It's been a very good election for you. It's been an excellent Absolutely. election for you. And I was wondering, how do, you, how do your friends respond to you when you first said, I'm going to go into politics? I mean, because I don't think this young generation has really engaged completely with politics as much as it can do, as much as it potentially can do. Yeah. So how did your friends react? Were they like, oh, geez, what are you doing that for, Ella? They were a bit surprised to start with. But um, I do think, though, that it hasn't traditionally been something that young people get into. But I think we can see, like, from just who's been voted in and the people who are getting out and voting now, that it's become a lot more of a hot topic. Yeah. Like, it's kind of the thing that we all talk about now when we go down to the pub and before we take photographs and things like that. <laughs> That's what we're all chatting about. Well, your generation so, would have grown up feeling that the future was pretty rosy and yeah. the rug's been pulled out from underneath your, yes, your feet completely. in the last couple, It's so. been a wake-up call but um, at the same time I think that if you can put down um, the roots now to try and you know get young people involved mm. and get everybody thinking about it and talking about it then you'll get a lot more fresh ideas and things will be coming through and hopefully we'll get out of it a lot quicker. Okay, we'll have okay, to leave it. Uh, by the way, obviously, two on all as well. Yeah, well Indeed, done. Actually, we have two Fine Gael and one Labour. We did make uh, several attempts yesterday to find a young Fianna Fáil councillor, <coughs> uh, newly elected, but we had difficulty with that. Thanks, guys, and congrats.